How's it going? Um, so what I'm going to talk to you about today is uh, just like a real down and dirty um, explanation of um, elastic and plastic deformation and working load limits uh, versus minimum brake strength or tensile strength. I talked to a lot of folks all over the country, um, you know, on the telephone and in person, and there's kind of a, I don't want to say a misconception, but um, people get really hung up on minimum brake strengths or tensile strengths. And that's, that's good to know where that, you know, that piece of hardware is going to fail at. But the one thing to consider is how did that manufacturer test the hardware? Are they doing a pin to pin pull test? Because I don't really care so much about, you know, how, how strong that piece of metal is. I want to know what's the rating on that piece of metal as we're using it in our rigging system or our climbing system. Um, so, you know, m most reputable manufacturers will have a minimum brake strength printed and they'll also have a working load limit. Kind of the, the de facto standard on hardware is a five to one working load limit, but the manufacturer can go with a four to one, they can go to a six to one, eight to one, and they'll normally state that. Um, and in talking about elastic versus plastic deformation and our working load limits, you know, so I have, you know, here this Rock Exotica pulley has an 80 kilonewton minimum brake strength. So what I'm, you know, taking from that is if I load this, this block system with, you know, 80.5 kilonewtons, I'm going to expect it to, to break, to explode. Um, my working load limit is 20 kilonewtons. So what that, you know, I'm going to operate under is if I stay under that 20 kilonewton, you know, loading and that working load limit, all I'm ever going to see is, is elastic deformation. I'm going to temporarily stretch, you know, the material the, the, at the molecular level and it will return once it's unloaded. And so here in a minute, I'll show you a, a, a very basic example of that. But so that's something to keep in mind is working load limit and you know without going into system safety factors but on our individual components we want to make sure that the forces that we're creating stay within that working load limit and you know you all the components in your system you're going to have to build or, or, or derive a system safety factor you know and or, or one of our rules of thumb and rigging is we want the rope to be the weakest link okay and like this hx pulley set you know i've got it rove right now in a five to one configuration don't have you know a, a a good bit of load there on that cam all right so you know this block as long as i stay within 20 kilonewtons i'm going to expect it to open and function correctly you know as it should shiv should spin you know i've had folks they'll, they'll tell me oh i only took a a 2000 pound log well if you're negative block and a 2000 pound log you far exceeded your working load limit and that's probably why your shiv doesn't spin freely anymore. You have difficulty opening and closing the cheek because now you've achieved plastic deformation. That's permanent, you know, deformation. You have bent and restructured that metal cold, okay? Uh, real common with some of the steel blocks, you know, guys uh, with those screw pin type of blocks, okay? If you don't, continually monitor them you're lowering your working load limit and here on this one they just give you a minimum brake strength of 25,000 pounds well I'm gonna you know going with a five to one working load limit I'm gonna say I got 5,000 pounds working load limit but it's very easy negative blocking if you're taking big pieces of wood you're gonna exceed that and this particular block failed when the operator took about a you know nine to eleven hundred pound top well, by the time that center of mass, you know, fell and loaded this portion of the rigging system, it, it was up over six, seven thousand pounds. Okay, and that's the reason this failed is these screw pin types. You have to every time make sure it's tight. And one of the Achilles on this particular block was this could catch and it would help it un come undone further. CMI has now gone to a knurled knob. It's going to have a lot less drag, a lot less likelihood of catching. But you still need to check that pin. All right, so back to that. We got our working load limits. You know, 
I have this carabiner here in my pocket. It's one of the strongest aluminum carabiners you're going to get, you know, on this planet. And this is from SMC. It has a 40 kilonewton tensile in this configuration. Now, I know the quality of SMC and how they test, and a lot of their equipment, they test it as it's going to be used. So you may see a lower working load limit or a lower tensile strength. They're not saying the particular item is, it's the rope that failed. You know, their brake bar racks, um, their, their, you know, like the spider, the uh, descent control device. You think, wow, why isn't that stronger? Well, the rope failed, right? And something to keep in mind when it comes to, you know, personal life safety equipment, our rope systems, our uh, ascent and descent systems. Once we get up over that 1,000, 1,200 pound marker, we're hurt, all right? But back, back to the point of this. So there's elastic deformation and there's plastic deformation. And the elastic is, you know, if I, if I load this carabiner enough, an easy way to see that is I'm going to have difficulty actuating the gate and I'm not going to be able to open the gate possibly. But once I unload it, everything is going to work. Now, if I, you know, this particular carabiner, so 40 kilonewtons, I'm going to go with, you know, 8 kilonewton working load limit. Let's say we were, you know, using this as a, uh, on the end of your chipper wind, you know, winch line. We could very easily, you know, get 1,800 pounds of force on this. We are going to deform this carabiner, and it's not going to function correctly. And we've probably all seen that, because I do it, and a lot of us do. We use a carabiner on the end of our rigging line just to speed up that, that process of, you know, lashing it to limbs and to trunk wood. And those carabiners don't last long, do they? And that's because they're starting to see in excess of the working load limit and you know other things getting banged, smashed, what have you. So on that note, I want you to uh, kind of focus on this part of the system here. I've got this uh, rove in a five to one configuration and it's gonna be this carabiner here, the non-locker, to just kind of easily show you, you know, right now this is, is essentially unloaded. There's very little tension on here. You know, functions, everything's working. And then I'll load it up and I'll show you. So as you can see here, oh wait, that's not nice. All right, carabiner's functioning. We're gonna put a few hundred pounds on it. So you see how I had difficulty getting that open, all right? And now, that gate, you know, the, isn't gonna seat back all the way because we have temporarily stretched this metal, all right? Now, hopefully you can still see that. Hopefully you're able to see that. So you see now that was an example of elastic deformation. We clearly were, you know, staying under the working load limit, but we had applied enough force to temporarily elongate and stretch and rearrange these aluminum molecules. And so we had elastic deformation. Now I could continue to rig on this with this five to one and, you know, make this carabiner inoperable. I won't be able to break it, but I will cause plastic deformation and this carabiner would then be retired from service because it'd be permanently damaged, permanently stretched, bent, in an inoperable condition. So that's elastic and plastic deformation. Always remember your working load limits and keep the rigging that you're doing within your working load limits and you'll get good service life out of your hardware and your textile systems.